The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time, about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And we have Meta delivering with their numbers last night. You are up 40 five dollars at five hundred and nineteen dollars we closed yesterday at 474 pretty remarkable the what excuse me that meta has had and you back things up on a daily 274 is the low recently you back it up man 88 bucks about a year and a half ago you're now going to be pushing about 520 all-time highs of 542 out there hanging in the balance and quite an acceleration on meta and that is carrying the markets higher to say the least we jump over you got Amazon shares. They're up about $3 on those strong numbers as well. You jump over to Microsoft that had their numbers Tuesday. Microsoft shares up about a buck seventy-five, And we got Apple and Amazon today after the bell. As I mentioned, Amazon up about $3 on that. And you got Apple up more than $2 right now in the pre-market at $224.32. You jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA shares. A little bit of volatility. Not sure if something got said on that conference call. No, that's about 4 in the morning, so not the conference call. Nonetheless, quite a sell at 4 in the morning. And what is interesting here is, you know, you barely have any volume in terms of what registers. You have 46 million in the overnight, and then that's a bar of only 1 million, right? 46 million when you have meta earnings coming out for a 15-minute bar and then one bar but at four in the morning can drive this thing down with a million shares because you're only getting about 600,000 200,000 so there was a sell at 121 on nvidia there about a million shares nonetheless we're trading right now up by about a ball a dollar fifty on nvidia shares we jump around to the market you got the s&p's up by 24 trading at 5581 right now and yeah, so there was a little bit of a drop in the general market at that time, too. Anytime you see NVIDIA move like that, you're going to see the general market. But nonetheless, S&P's up by almost half a percent. NASDAQ 100 up by a third of a percent. We get the Dow in positive territory up by 62 points right now. The Dow trading at 41,113 and the Russell slightly in the red. It would make sense if tech stocks are surging higher. We have the rotation going on in terms of tech stocks not doing as well as the Russell in the last few weeks. Well, it seems like the run may not be over just yet. And we'll get into May, um, Meta's earnings in a moment, but they are strong earnings, man. And they are beating, and AI is carrying them forward, and they're going to continue to spend money. And they can probably do it if it's actually delivering to the top line, and some of that is going to the bottom line. Crude, up 35 pennies. Look at this run it's at. From Tuesday at 74.59, we're up basically about $4 from Tuesday's lows at 78.27. Now, we had Fed Day yesterday. We'll talk about that, of course. Gold climbing to 2500 overnight. We were just trading at 2351 folks, less than a week ago. That's a $150 run. Now, you did get a rollover that helps in terms of the future price in that period of time. But you had futures trading at 2351 last Thursday as of the close. To kick off this Thursday, we're trading at 2500 Gold up $22 on the session right now, $2,495. You got silver. Up by 18 pennies at 29.12. And we jump to notes and bonds. And we got to run, man. Now, what do we got? Is it Bank of England I think we have going on out here as well? Yeah, Bank of England. They are cutting rates. Okay, so. And this was always. And this is why we talked to Teddy Kegstad on Wednesdays. I asked him yesterday, if you're listening to the program, to talk a little bit about the relationship between the yen and the dollar and how that works when you're talking about crude, which the U.S. is a producer of crude. Japan is a consumer of crude and produces no crude whatsoever. OK, so it's interesting in the same way. It's similar. So that is a commodity, right? When the U.S., when crude prices go up, that helps the dollar because we produce that commodity, which is crude. 
So if people want to gain access to our crude, they need to turn their currencies into dollars. Therefore, a higher dollar, a higher crude price is going to translate into strength in our U.S. dollar because we are a producer. Believe it or not, at this point, we are a producer of crude. We're not a consumer. We're a consumer as well. But because we produce such a high level, that matters when you're doing cross currencies to other currencies that do not produce crude and just consume it. Now you translate that to yield, okay? Do the same exact thing, except wrap your brain around the fact that yields are, are could be, and for the purposes of this experiment, okay, or analogy, they could be a commodity, right? They're an item that you need to access and you need to put your money into a certain currency to access those yields. Well, what just happened with the Bank of England? What happened is, is they cut interest rates okay so if people want access to our interest rates which are higher right now we'll jump around to this since we are bank of england cuts interest rates to five percent remember we're at five and a quarter to five point five percent right now right so what happens well if you're holding pounds and you want to access our yields which are now higher in relative context even though they're probably going down in september but for today what happens well you have the pound trading lower all right, let's see how the euro is trading on that news. But the pound is going to be the biggest hit, of course. Euro trading lower as well. And this combines a lot of different things. And we actually have dollar strength. Now, what's interesting is you have dollar strength on the heels of we're getting lower yield as well. So dollar strength, no matter what right now, coming down the line is how we wrap that one up, man. Uh, dollar at 104.35, above anywhere we were yesterday. Now, Chairman Powell, he could have been a little bit stronger with his dovish stance if he wanted to, right? He could have laid out where they're going. Maybe he could have laid out that we're probably ready for a cut in September. We could, they could have laid out that they've talked about they're probably going to cut. No, that's not what got said. They have not decided they're going to cut in September. It's going to be data dependent. Where they go from there is going to be data dependent as well. So he didn't lay out some type of deal where he said, you know, we'll probably go every other meeting. Market would have been on fire just to hear something like that. None of that given, okay? And even with none of that given... He seemed very receptive to the idea that cuts are going to be coming, folks. That was my take on it, listening. And we have the 10-year approaching 4%. We're sitting right now at 4.019. We might break 4% while I'm on the air. 4.019, the yield right now on the 10-year. Make it 4.018 as I speak. So we got lower yields, the 10-year, right back at about 4%. And on the daily, here's the other thing you want to do keep in mind, though, okay? We are approaching the level that this is priced in, though, okay? We are approaching the level that multiple cuts are priced into this market right now. We are all the way back to a 112.12 handle, the highs of December 113.12. Recall where the market was at that point in time in terms of anticipating cuts. Where were we? I think that's when the conversation was that we were doing five or six cuts coming this year. Because remember, that was 2023. Do you remember the narrative? Five or six cuts coming down the line. I'm giving you that because, yes, the tide has shifted. The market is now anticipating that cuts are coming down the line, and it is priced in. Okay? Maybe we got a move up of another half a point or a point, but the 10 years at 4% right now. The Fed is sitting at 5 and a quarter to 5.5% right now. Do not anticipate that we're going to get some mammoth move right now above 113.12. Okay, on a longer term basis, there's your three year weekly. Yeah, if you're going to compare it to where we were in COVID or something like that, um, we got a long way to go go back to zero. We're not going back to zero right now. We'll finish this up. We got a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back the annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We have the 10 years. So finishing up that conversation, right, on a shorter term basis, you bring things back. We're trading at 112.12 right now. We're sitting with a 10-year yield approaching 4% right now. Folks, with the type of growth that we have going on, right, we get the AI revolution ripping these markets higher. Just think about for one one moment, okay, can – can equities handle a 10-year cost of capital at 4%? You better believe that they can or they should be able to, okay? It would not be healthy for the market to go back to a time that we're talking about, you know, 10-year yields and mortgages at two and three quarters percent, et cetera. Do not be swayed by recency bias in terms of where interest rates were for so long. If we were not just in an environment that had everything basically at zero percent, right? To to lease a car, um, to buy a car, car loans zero percent for five years, right? Mortgages three percent for thirty years, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think we're going back to there. So don't get caught up, and even taking you know COVID out of the mix, okay? I would not get caught up in this tenure getting back into the one nineteen to one thirty range. All right, we're trading at 113 right now. We got a 10 year yield of about 4%. And I think we're going to go back to a time of more reasonable rates. Now, that's not the case if we need it, though. Okay, that's not the case if it becomes a dire situation that the Fed needs to cut. 
And we jump to why they may need to cut jobs as initial jobless claims rise to the highest level in nearly a year. That number coming in at 249,000, still somewhat of a healthy number. Anywhere between 200, 225 is like a healthy churn in the economy. We're talking about a number of 249 in the weekend of July 27th. The median forecast was looking for 236, so a little bit hot. Continuing claims rose to 1.88 million. That data is one week older as of July 20th. The initial claims are as of July 27th. The continuing claims number, the highest number since November of 2021. So the Fed is coming in September, man. All right, you're getting higher prints across the board for joblessness, unemployment rising. We get a big number tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning for non-farm payrolls. We'll be on the air at 9 o'clock, of course, for that. Powell said Wednesday that there are increasing risks to the labor market, noting that job growth has moderated and the unemployment rate has moved up, but the jobless rate remains historically low and data from the first half is not singling, signaling a weak economy, he said at a press conference. Yeah, he talked about that it was kind of normalizing, that it's not necessarily weak, it's just normalizing. Okay, we're still adding hundreds of thousands of jobs some months. It is still on the positive, but where is the trend? And that's what's going to be interesting here. The four-week average is at 238,000. Um, yeah. And then you got productivity. U.S. productivity picks up while labor cost growth moderates. You got productivity. U.S. worker productivity increased in the second quarter by more than forecast. Productivity um, or non-farm business employee output per an hour rose at a 2.3% annualized rate in the April to June period after rising only slightly. And this is where I talk about, you know, can we can we handle a 4% cost of capital over a 10-year period? I mean, come on, you got productivity going up 2.3% in a three-month period. Unit labor costs, or would a business pays employees to produce one unit of output increased at 0.9% rate, okay, after climbing 3.8% to start the year. So quite a decline there in terms of the cost. But yeah, AI is going to revolutionize everything, man. And I, I, it would be, it would be difficult to imagine that the cost of capital is going to go back to zero percent at the same time that you're going to have computers doing everything. Now there is the case that we're spending a lot of money on capex to develop all this, so the cost of capital is going to be important there, of course. But nonetheless, getting back into the meta numbers for a moment, okay? Upbeat earnings buys time for AI investment to pay off. Now. Yeah, how about their reach, man? 3.27 billion people, man, when you combined Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Pretty remarkable. Instagram for $1 billion, one of the best acquisitions in the history of the world, man. Uh, whether that's legal or not, in terms of that should have been allowed, I mean, I think hindsight's 2020. But you can obviously see that those are the two biggest social networks out there, and Zuckerberg just cut off his competition for a $1 billion. And meanwhile, this company... I mean, what are we talking about now? You're almost a trillion dollar company. What are we going to be pushing on the open from Meta? What are we at? I don't think they're quite there yet. They are 1.3 trillion. 1.3 trillion, and they 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 boxed out a competitor for a billion dollars. Um, and yeah, you didn't know where it was going to be at that time, but Zuckerberg did. He saw it right away that it was a revolutionary product, Instagram, and and that it has been. Uh, okay, some of their numbers, right, to get into. Let's cherry pick a few of them. CNBC kind of highlights just the the top line numbers a little bit quicker than Bloomberg, which gets into the meat of things a little bit better. Earnings for Meta, 516 versus 473. Revenue, they beat as well, 39.07 billion versus 38.31. Revenue guidance, strong number, man. For the third quarter, they give a range of 38.5 to 41. The middle of that range comes in at $39.75 billion, and the forecast was for about $39.1. Now, $39.1 is in the middle of that range, but that would be a disappointment if they come in at $39.1 for the range they've set, right? They're looking for probably $40 billion plus. You wouldn't give a range like that if you didn't think you were going to come in the neighborhood of about $40 billion. You're giving yourself some leeway, but again, you want to under-promise and over-deliver. And how about the growth? Second quarter revenue growth, 22% from $32 billion a year ago. Bonkers, man. So I mentioned in my newsletter, I think maybe on the program too. And yeah, on the program yesterday, their 
growing at 25 times projected earnings. That was as of yesterday. So that's going to change today. Okay. The NASDAQ, excuse me, they're growing at 20. Yeah, was it 25 or 21? No, they're growing at 21, I think it was, times earnings. And the NASDAQ 100 was priced at 25 times projected earnings. So not a bonkers projected earnings estimate in terms of how that equity is priced when you factor in that they have revenue growth of 22% from a year earlier, the fourth straight quarter of growth in excess of 20%. Net income, they're taking it to the bottom line, jumped 73%. Now, they were having some problems with income a year ago, right? To $13.47 in 90 days. Look at the margins, man. They're taking in 38, uh, what was their revenue? 39 billion and they're taking 13 of those billion right to the bottom line. They made 7.9 billion a year ago. Now, expenses, 24.2 billion in the quarter that included a charge from its agreement to settle a facial recognition data lawsuit for 1.4 billion, okay? Expenses for the outlook for the year, 96 to 99 billion dollars. How about that, man? Yeah, um, and we'll finish this up when you're talking about capital expenditures, 37 to $40 billion. But guess what? That came in a little bit light in the prior quarter. We'll finish this up. Come back for the opening bell, folks. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you are green. Russell, we'll call it flat, negative by half a point, but the Dow up by 160. You got the NASDAQ 100 barely holding on to those gains. Interesting, right? You got a stock like Meta. If I told you yesterday that Meta was going to come out and be up 9%, and I said, where do you think the NASDAQ 100 is going to be? But what does happen there is that you get the pop in the after hours briefly, which is somewhat included in that yeah, no real pop. Interesting, as in, you know, NASDAQ 100, barely positive. We were all the way up at 19,717. We've given up 180 of those positive points in the NASDAQ 100. Meanwhile, you got MetaShares right now up by 9.2%, $43 to the upside, man. And I was talking about yesterday on the show that Meta is a stock that does move dramatically in terms of what you're talking about. Excuse me. And yeah, how many shares do they have outstanding? Let's check it out because this is quite a move. We got 2.5 billion. Yeah, 2.5 billion. So what did they just add? 100 billion dollars. Yeah, 100 billion, almost more than 100 billion dollars of market cap added to this equity overnight. And you know, you come into those earnings at about 1.2 trillion. We're now above 1.3 trillion dollars for Meta. All right, we jump around to Microsoft, as I mentioned, with their numbers on Tuesday. They're trading right now at 419.48, basically flat. And we got Amazon and Apple tonight. So Amazon, they're up by a buck 75 right now, almost one percent in the positive. You jump over to Apple shares, they're up by similar, almost one percent in the positive at 224 right now. We check out Google shares, they're down four tenths percent. And finishing up the conversation. For some of those meta numbers, because it is interesting when you look at, like I talked about, the margins, what they're taking in, etc. So 3.27 billion people, daily active users, daily active users. How many people are in the in the world? 7.7 .7 billion or something? Let's look it up on Earth. How many people? 7.95 billion. I was close. The number keeps going up. We'll call it 8 billion people. They have one out of two people in the entire world using their products on a daily basis basis i mean that is just um astounding obviously but pretty remarkable when you look at it in that perspective getting back to those numbers okay and there are a couple i want to focus on here first of all how about the margins all right and listen i have a small amount of meta no real this is not like a biased presentation man this is just i'm, I'm waking myself up a little bit saying maybe i need to unload a little bit of of other equities or something and, and add some meta because the story here is pretty remarkable and I think they seem pretty well positioned to capitalize off of AI in terms of what AI is getting used for um, to, to, to maximize ad delivery, user experience, profits of course. Operating income climbed 58% from a year earlier, okay, 14.9 billion. Their margin expanded to 38% from 29% a year earlier. Now, they laid off 21,000 jobs, right? But look at the impact of the spin, the turnaround that they had. The, for the revenue they're taking in, to increase your margins by almost 10% over a year period, you got to give credit where it's due, man. Um, they 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 nicked some jobs that, that obviously they didn't need to deliver the results that they have going on right now. And it is interesting. Um, yeah, they're spending heavily on cutting-edge technology like AI and virtual reality, of course. Now, one thing that is interesting here is that they came in slightly below. Capital expenditure, $8.47 billion for the second quarter, below the nine point five one that the market was looking for. That you got to love that as well. So margins are through the roof. They're not blowing through more CapEx than the market was thinking. So maybe Zuckerberg kind of learned his lesson when the stock traded down to $88 and the market freaked out when he was just spending billions without actually making money on it. So they're probably going to keep their CapEx at least in line. It's going to be a big number, all right? They narrowed the range for their capital expenditures. It's now going to be 37 to $40 billion. The low number was previously 35 so they've ramped it up a bit. But the expense outlook for the year unchanged 96 to 99 billion dollars is the number there that is quite i mean how are you going to compete with these companies going forward man and that's where you know not to get political but the conversation is going to have to take place man because there are going to be server farms that are running you know for lack of a better term skynet technology back from good old uh terminator and 
I don't know how you're going to compete with some of these companies that are going to be driving the AI revolution, taking over everything, and you're spending $100 billion a year to have that computing power. How are you going to take out these big tech companies? And not take them out, but you know we've seen these revolutions before, right? You had the GE, the General Electric, right? You had the, the powerhouses of the U.S. economy, and as things change, there is a changeover of innovation, technology. Those companies go out, new companies come in, they innovate, etc. I mean, I hope I'm just getting to an age where I'm an old man and, and I'm not, but you know, that I, I can't see it. But it is very difficult when you have the computing power that these companies are going to have to have companies that come and eat their lunch. Because how do you do it when you got companies that are spending $100 billion and they're going to have the computing power of AI behind them? And that's a tough one to compete with, man. So we're going to have some conversations coming up as you have server farms running the world with AI. But nonetheless, MetaShares trading higher. All right, let's talk about some other stuff we got going on. As I mentioned, Bank of England, they cut the rates to 5% as traders eye another move in November. So they cut the rates for the first time since the pandemic to 5%. They're a little bit ahead of us. And uh, they stress a cautious approach, alert to the risks of another surge in of inflation. I mean, you're going to hear all this verbiage from... Powell when he makes the cut in, in September as well. Traders see another cut in November. The pound holds its decline and uh, guilt yields fall, as you can expect when you get that type of move. They cut interest rates for the first time since early 2020. We're going to get all the same headlines in September, man. It's coming. There's no way that the Fed needs to be at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent right now. Remember that they are going to be able to make the case that they're still in a restrictive policy position when they make that first cut. The, the more interesting conversation is going to take place when they get two to three cuts down the line and you potentially still have wages rising at 4%, 4.5%, and you have the Fed with an FOMC policy rate at 45 to 4 and 3 quarters percent, right? How do they, where do we go from there? What if we just get two or three cuts and they say, you know what, we're going to hang out at 4.5 for a while because we think that's a healthy interest rate right now. The other thing that you have to keep in mind, right, is if there's – and this is all hinging on a healthy economy, right? If if things really start to weaken, jobless claims go up, non-farm payrolls, we actually lose numbers at some months, then yes, they're going to cut. But if we are in a healthy economy, if we're still adding 100 to 200,000 jobs a month on non-farm payrolls, if we still have the unemployment rate under 4.5 percent, you should want the Fed to have some room to cut in the case that we need it. I mean, if you, do you remember the conversations going on for so long when they said, hey, you know, this tenure, I mean, the Fed is at zero. What happens if we really get a recession and you need some real room to cut? They're not going to have the ammunition you need to provide capital and, and, and growth for the economy when you're so near the zero bound already. You, I think we're going to start to see the Fed shift to a case that, yes, we're going to cut because five and a quarter or 5.5 is too much. But five or six cuts like we were pricing in the beginning of the year, the market's been wrong many times before. We're going to find out. And uh, September will be here before you know it. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll talk some more equities. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets higher across the board. The Russell sneaks into positive territory, and we got the 10 year. We're almost there, man. We are at 4.007%. We just hit 112.16 right there on the 10 year. We're up by 22 ticks right now on the 10 year. As we got 18 minutes to go until 10 a.m., the end of the program, and we might get a three handle on the 10 year yield as we come into that um, 10 o'clock price point. Pretty remarkable. S&Ps, you catch a little bit of a bid there. There's your 15-minute bar. We'll put it back to a five to see the opening bell. There it is, driving higher. We opened at 55.74, just like that. We're up 20 points from the opening bell. We're up by now. Yeah, look at There we go, man. We're rising. NASDAQ 100. You catch a bid on the open as well. We just traded from about 19,520 to 19,620, up by 100 points. Dow right now up by 162. And as I mentioned, the Russell now positive by two points. Crude, 74.33 right now. You jump over that gold contract up by $24. As I mentioned, we're above 25.02 earlier in the morning as well. We jump around to some other equities with their earnings. Moderna, not getting it done, man. Down by 18.3% from Moderna shares. They were down 15. They slashed the guidance on low EU sales um, and tough U.S. vaccine market is how they put it here at CNBC. Biotech company now expects 2024 product revenue to come in between 3 billion and 3.5 down from a previous guidance of four that is quite a haircut folks all right that i mean three to 3.5 when they previously said four watch out on that equity man you back this up on the longer term basis how about it right um yeah, the pandemic pushes five hundred dollars, and we're trading right now at ninety-seven bucks. And they got a problem if you're slashing revenue to the tune of twenty-five percent, where you thought this thing was going to be just uh, prior in terms of four billion. Now that number's three to three point five. So Moderna, they're facing some trouble, to put it lightly. Yeah. All right, and what else we got going on, folks? Don't forget about the Tiger Dollar Sale. Last day to get your Tiger Dollars. You sign up for any newsletter. You're an active subscriber to any newsletter currently. Folks, if you're subscribed to any newsletter currently, go over there and get some Tiger Dollars, man. You can lock in savings. It's super easy. Uh, they're automatically applied. If you have any product out there, they get used automatically. 
you can purchase them in three purchase levels. You spend 500, you get a free 100 Tiger dollars for 600. That's a 20% bonus on your money. You spend 1,000, you get 1,300. That's 300 additional free Tiger dollars bonus to you or a 30% bonus. And you spend 1,500, you get 2,100 Tiger dollars. That's 600 free Tiger dollar bonus do dollars to your account. 40% bonus on what you spend. Not bad for a daily return. And yeah, you apply them once. They're used automatically. They're good for any newsletter, any service. If you're out there, you're a subscriber to Market Insights, to the Gold Report, okay? If you're grandfathered in at any older rates, they still get used. If you're signing up for any new products, you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't think you use Tiger Dollars that you don't get that guarantee for a refund. You do. We just refund you the Tiger Dollars if you don't like a product and you want to access that 30-day money-back guarantee. So Gold Report, Market Insights, Basil Chapman's opening call. Mastering Probability, my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, Larry's Fibonacci 24-7, Teddy Kegstats, Outstanding Tiger Forex Report. You signed up for any services. All right, you're out there. You do live trading Fridays with Larry. You want to sign up for any of the webinars we have out here that are available? Tim Ward's got a couple of great webinars out here. Teddy Kegstat's got a couple great webinars out here. We have access to some of the archives of some of the webinars. All of those you can use Tiger Dollars, folks. We run a couple of these sales throughout the year. This one ends today, August 1st. So check that out on the front page of TFNN. Lock in the Tiger Dollar sale, 20, 30, or 40% bonus. And that's double the bonuses. Tiger Dollars are always available. Keep that in mind as well. All right. You want to get the sale, that's for sure. But if you're paying for any newsletter service, get some Tiger Dollars. Even throughout the year, we still offer a 10, 15, or 20% bonus throughout the year and they're automatically used so if you're paying for a monthly subscription service get some Tiger Dollars apply them and um, I, these sales come in we got a, a lot of astute customers out there and I'm always amused they say oh there he is there she is right the same customers they wait for the sale they lock it in they apply them to their newsletter that's recurring on a monthly or a yearly service something like that and I'm like look at this gentleman this woman saving 40% um, locking in some dramatic savings as opposed to just letting it hit your credit card as it rolls around. All right, we got a strong market, man. S&P's up by 40. We check in on Meta shares. Holding on to the gains, up by 9.6% from Meta, trading at $520. Pretty <laughs> remarkable run up, $45. We check out Amazon and Apple. They're going to be out with their earnings. Amazon out, up 1.6%. And Apple shares up about half a percent. So let's take a look and see what kind of move we got coming down the line. All right, Amazon. They're looking for about a $12 move in either direction. That's what's priced in, folks, in options. All right. On Amazon shares. Yeah, you got about a $12 move. So what is that? 6% move for Amazon shares, and you jump over to Apple shares, you're looking at about an $8.50 move for their earnings after the bell. Uh, slightly less volatility for a company like Apple versus a company like Amazon, and Amazon's going to have some work to do, man, because the, the bar has been set pretty high. When you look at Microsoft trading higher, Oh, look at Microsoft. There it is. Yeah. Microsoft catches a pop on the open. You're up $5 from where you were on the open, man. Microsoft, $6. Look at that. You were just trading at a 14, 418 handle on Microsoft, and now you're trading at a 426 handle from Microsoft. Whew. Let's see how Google's trading. Oh, yeah. The tech stocks are coming, man. Look at NVIDIA. Up by 2%. AMD following their strong earnings. Uh down by half a percent. They had quite a give back yesterday, right? From 153 down to 140 towards the end of the session. You ended at about 143.50 for AMD shares. Intel, they're laying off thousands of workers. Yeah, that's that's a different story, man. That's just buying a story for Intel. They, they got a turnaround story. They're trying to sell, but they haven't been able to get it done yet. Tesla shares right now down by 1.4%, trading at 228.90 for Tesla shares. All right, what else we got? Disney. Disney's been on a little bit of a run. It's going to be interesting to see if it can actually make a real run here. This has been lower prices, lower lows, lower highs since that peak high of 123 back in April. And, yeah, they got to get a little bit more of a run than this going on. Strong numbers from Deadpool and Wolverine out there. They took in almost half a billion dollars on their opening weekend. And they're going to have to do more than that, though, as you're trading at 93.75. You're basically flat this morning. And, yes, you've gotten quite a little pop, okay, from where they are. Where is Disney out with their numbers? We'll have to pull it up. I think they're out with their numbers later this month. I'm just not sure what the date is. We'll pull it up and get that number in terms of when. 
But nonetheless, Disney shares basically trading flat this morning, 93.74. Yeah, look at this NASDAQ 100. So recent, look at look at the recent run, okay? The recent run from April, send this out to newsletter subscribers. You drive up to 21,000, we'll call it 20,983. You were trading at only 17,000 as of April 19th, and we pull back to the 50%. And you also pull back to basically that area that you traded a little bit lower from. That spike high on May 23rd was 19,023. And uh, yeah, we pull back just below that level, and boy, that was quite a bar to the upside. I mean, you do it, you do it with some volume. And uh, we'll see if we can survive today. You got Amazon, you got Apple coming out with their numbers. The market trading them up today. Amazon up by 1.7%, as I mentioned, and Apple shares up by six tenths. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps holding on to gains. Russell sneaks back into the negative. Had to pull it back in the Dow. Yeah. Check it out. The Dow gives it back pretty quickly from when we were on the air. Just like that, the Dow trading a little bit lower, actually, in negative prices. 
And you have the Nasdaq carrying it higher, up 123 right now. We check back in on Meta. How about it, man? It's not stopping. Yeah, not surprising. Take a look at Meta, folks. Those were some dramatic numbers. I talked about the margins, right? They went to 38% margins from like 29% margins a year ago. They actually went under the number of CapEx that the market was looking for. Strong numbers. And AI is going to deliver for that company. You think about how computers running the world – in terms of the best ads to serve, the best ads, where to serve them, that's something that is just large data-driven AI perfection. You're going to start getting served up the exact ads you want that correlate to the exact videos that you're watching, etc. cetera. Um, they are well-positioned, and it seems like they're running their company lean and mean right now. Pretty remarkable. Lean and mean as they spend – hundred billion dollars a year practically to run that company that's lean and mean for a company like meta up by 10.7 percent from meta shares now how about ackman you talk about um falling from the heights so much for a 25 billion dollar target so much for 2.5 no it's not happening at all they pulled their ipo after slashing the target they originally were going for 25 billion that's a number they put out just earlier this month well not this month anymore today's august first trading day of august then they put out a letter July 24th, a week ago, saying they're going to go for 2.5 to 4 billion. And finally, they were going to go for 2 billion. Now it's not happening at all. And you know why, folks? You don't know, you know why it's not happening at all? Because nobody's going to be out there paying a 2% management fee to gain access to 12 to 15 positions in large caps. That is a huge fee just to go out there and buy 12 to 15 positions in large caps, investment grade free cash flow generating North American growth companies. That's what they were going to do. That's what they were doing. Long-term equity stakes in 12 to 15 positions in large cap investment grade free cash flow generating North American growth companies. The fund was set to feature a 2% management fee, which would have been waived for the first year. Uh, and people were like, no, you compound that type of a fee and I am losing money. Folks, don't forget about Tiger Dollars. Go over the front page of TSN.